Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be taking the toniest, uh, tiniest probe ever out into the solar system. Now, forget ion engines. RCS is uh, slightly overpowered in the current version of the game. So what you have here is a Staputnik probe with two of the spherical RCS tanks. We have uh, a single solar cell on top to recharge the batteries on there and three linear RCS thrusters. And you see that it takes off with quite amount of, uh, you know, acceleration there. I think it has a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.5. So that's more than enough to lift this thing up and get into, into orbit. And uh, as you see, <laughs> getting up to the first 10 kilometers, I've only used up 1% of my fuel. Uh, not even 1%, half of 1%. But, you know, you can take this up into space. Now, if you're going to do this, I advise that you take off at dawn because you will be turning towards the east and you want your solar panel on the top of your spacecraft to catch the sun. And the hardest part of flying something this small is managing your solar panel because uh, you have a few minutes of maneuvering time uh, before the battery runs down so you have to plan your maneuvers to make sure that they're going to be in light and also when you finish doing stuff you have to make sure you reorient it, your solar panel so that it points back at the sun and this can be hard uh, if you're flying around a planet for example so here we are here we are doing my orbital insertion burn again using a maneuver node system which is great for people that aren't quite sure about how to judge these things you can always use the map but uh, it's nice to use maneuver nodes so you can admire the game. So yeah, I'm going to be going to the outer solar system and as you know that requires I burn on the dark side which means I have to make my burn very quickly to uh, accelerate outwards and uh, when I'm finished, well, all that time my battery power is going to be depleting and you see it ticking away in the top uh, right corner. Before that goes down to zero, I have to have finished my maneuver and reorientate the spacecraft back to point towards the sun will be, but it won't charge, start recharging right away because we're on the dark side of the planet. So here we are, the maneuver is, is practically finished. I'm trying to get to Drez, so I'm going to guess where the sun is because I can't see it. I'm just going to basically point my solar panel straight down. And uh, while I won't be able to get the benefit of the sun immediately, my velocity will drag me out over. And when the sun rises, you can see there our battery regenerates practically instantly. So that was probably the most, uh, <laughs> the hardest part of the maneuver because uh, we had to deal with uh, the light and shade situation. Now it's just a question of rendezvousing with Drez and... Um, to make this interest, this video interesting, yeah, I picked a new target that I haven't gone to before. So we're just going to use the maneuver node system to align the planes. And uh, once again, you know, I get very close to my um, maneuver node, and then I get ready to burn. So we uh, have the maneuver node again is off at the the south, I believe here. So I have to turn it until I'm getting no power. And at that point, I burn and hopefully I won't run out of power before the maneuver is finished. So there you go. Electric charge is depleting slowly. But uh, you can see that my velocity meter on the maneuver node indicator is going down a lot more quickly. So we will be completing the mission or completing the maneuver before this runs out. Now, when you're orbiting around, you can't just leave it in time accelerated mode because as you orbit the sun moves across the sky so you have to keep un, uh, sw switching back to regular time so you can reorient the solar panel and this can be a very long and frustrating process especially when you have to make several orbits to get your encounter so I'm just uh, following the blue reticule here to try and get my, my uh, maneuver as exact as possible all we're doing here is aligning the planes so that we uh, end up co-planar with Drez. Once we're there, it becomes a lot easier to adjust our orbit and try and get our target uh, orbit correctly. And yeah, you see, turning back towards the sun, getting the thing charged up, and uh, we want to nuke that and now pick up a new maneuver node. We're going to circularize our orbit a little. Now, you see there that uh, Drez is behind us, so we are actually going to want to go into a higher orbit so that it starts to catch us up. And yes, thanks to maneuver node system, that should be rather trivial. There we go. 
So now we are in a higher orbit and it is going to catch up on us. And to go from that orbit into an encounter, what we're going to do is add a maneuver node that brings us down onto a crossing orbit, right? But the thing is, we're not sure where that should be. So to get onto a crossing orbit, I'm going to do a retrograde burn. And you can see the, the closest approach there is happening. Now, my closest approach position is in front of them. So I pick up the maneuver node and drag it around until I get better and better encounters. And this is the way to do it, is you drag it around and get these things closer and closer. Because we are in a higher orbit coming to a lower orbit, we will be moving faster than Dres, so we don't want to be coming up behind it. We want to be coming up in front of it. Uh, we want to be coming up behind it so that we catch up on it. And there we go. Yeah, bit of tweaking to the maneuver node, and we have a legitimate encounter. So it's just a case of time accelerating all the way there getting as close to that as possible because accuracy for planetary encounters is really important, especially with this when we can't throttle down. We have you know, 15 meters per second acceleration regardless. There's no throttle involved here. So we want to get this as exact as possible, uh, make our burn, and then hopefully we will have the encounter. Now you see the meter coming down here. Again, it's another one of those maneuvers which is perpendicular to the sun, so our battery is depleting. You've got to be per you know, permanently vigilant for this. Thankfully, if, if you lost control at this point, you probably would be fine because you would eventually, you would just be able to time accelerate and eventually the sun would rotate around. If you were pointing perhaps at the south or north pole and you uh, forgot to reset your location, you might find yourself in a situation that permanently never looks at the, the sun, in which case you would be stuck. Also, if you end up going too far away, you the weakness of the sun will not be able to sustain your solar power. So all things to consider when you're doing this. You could just fit a radio isotope generator, but that would be a whole lot less entertaining, I'm sure you see. So the capture is easy enough. We've got our capture. We just circularize our orbit. And since we're the, coming down in a anti-clockwise orbit, you see, I'm just going to drop my periaps right onto the surface so that I'm going to land on the light side. Do not attempt to land this thing on the dark side. You, <laughs> you will be running out of power very quickly. <laughs> and so there we go. The planet Dres, or the minor, pl the dwarf planet. I have to say, dwarf planet. Minor planets are even smaller than dwarf planets. Uh, dwarf planets, there's only a handful. Minor planets, there are half a million. So, I mean, panning the camera across, we're just kind of trying to look for a nice flat place on the surface. Um, because the because there's no landing gear on this, we want to be really careful about our landing position. Maybe we can roll uh, the whole thing upright if we fall over, but all the same, it's nice if we can find a nice flat area. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking around there, kind of hovering, saying, does that look flat enough? I don't know. Um, Tony is no doubt uh, just doing his mission the way he is, it was designed. There we go, coming down. And it's really hard to tell. We can see the shadow. Uh, we don't have an exact measure of height. We can't go inter inside the cockpit and get the radar altimeter working. And yeah, you can see it there. I, what happens here is I start coming down and I'm just looking at the, the space probe and I'm saying, oh, that's moving way too fast compared to capsules. And I'm used to the capsules, so I'm kind of judging the altitude based on this. I'm not looking at the velocity. The surface velocity here <laughs> is absolutely minuscule. It's because the cap the Stayputnik is so small that my eyes kept misjudging things. So I kept saying, oh, I'm going too fast, slow down, and overdoing it. So you get this terrible pogoing. Uh, it's almost like, remember when I would forget to turn off physical time warp for landing? There we go, you see, beautiful landing. And we have used 25% of our fuel tank. This design could probably go to every single planet, uh, or at least fly by every single planet, probably get into every single planet's orbit, maybe land on a, uh, a dozen. Um, and so that's my case. RCS is overpowered. That's also my record. The tiniest, toniest space probe. RCS-powered, uh, solar-powered, and, uh, well... 
a horrible pain to fly nonetheless. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.